Hi everyone, we're here at a location outside of Cockerton and going to give you some information on the dogs that are near me and we're going to be talking about them but we're also going to give you an opportunity to see some action and what these dogs are trained to do and things like that. So I'm going to start on the far right here and she's going to introduce herself and her dog and we'll go right down the line but we'll skip me of course. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Chris and, and, and this is my five-year-old Springer bitch. Her name is Dee. And she has never once since I walked out here taken your eyes off, her eyes off of you. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. That's, Absolutely. That's called focus. I know. It's called nuts too, but it certainly is good. I'm impressed. And you are? I'm Chrissy Guerin. This is my dog, Grifter. Drifter, did you say? Grifter. Grifter. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm Dave Edwards, and this is my dog, Alfie, and my little dog, Tilly. Alfie and Tilly and? I'm Becky Stanton and this is my uh, three-year-old Springer Archie. So. Okay, my first question, and I got you a few minutes ago, tell me what the difference is here of all these dogs and we said English and American and just give us a, a quick overall, not a real encyclopedia lesson, but yep. just something that will help us out here. Well, the overall of all these dogs is they're all field bred for a specific purpose of hunting. So the liver and whites are uh, English Springer Spaniels, and these two dogs are English Cocker Spaniels. And this is liver, and that's black, of course. And uh, Well, now I'm gonna ask a question, just because I'm trying to think of what the people that are watching the show are going to ask. Wait a minute, Cocker Spaniels? I know Cocker Spaniels are about this high and stuff like that. How do these two differ from that? Well, they, uh, there, there's a couple different varieties. Also in the English Springers, there's uh, bench-bred English Springers, and these are the field variety. Along with the English Cocker, they can be bench-bred or field-bred, and these happen to be field-bred Cockers. Bench-bred meaning? Confirmation-based uh, uh, breeders. Chose. Yeah, chosen, and they're chosen for different attributes. These guys are chosen for their attributes of hunting and, and their, their build and confirmation as well. Okay, and how, how, what other colors do they come in? Well, English Cockers can come in That's many, these. many varieties, yes. Right. Uh, these are the two primary colors, the most common, black and liver. And you can get a lot of different varieties, including roans, which are the speckled looking oh, okay. dogs. And that comes in like a lemon roan and a, and a blue roan. They'll call the black actually a blue then. And you can get a liver roan. Oh, wow. And uh, you can get solids, you can get solid reds, you can get solid lemons, you can get... Uh, <laughs> Every combination. There's, there's tons and tons of combination, and I think that's what, what people really fancy about them now is uh, not only their size, mm -hmm. but their, uh, their colorations. That also happens with a lot of other breeds. We have mixed and matched and twisted and turned, and now we have no idea what the originals were and things like that. Right. Okay, now tell me about the ones that are over here. What, what kind are these? These are what? English Springer Spaniels. And, and they come in what? Uh, obviously liver and... Yep. This one's actually a tricolor. It's red. Oh, all right. It's more red than you yep. I do see that. Okay. And then we have primarily white. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, 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 they, and there's a black, and black and white. And all black ones. Oh, black and white. Black, are black and white. Yeah. Black and white. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Springers don't come in solid colors, whereas the... Cocker Spaniels do. What, uh, how much do they usually weigh? Springers, they go probably anywhere from 30 pounds to, you know, big, yeah, big ones can be 55 pounds. Uh, cockers can be anywhere from 20 to 30 pounds. The, the majority of people that get a dog like this, are they getting it to um, train it and have it doing certain things which you just talked about, or are they also good pets? They're very good pets. Uh, they're, they're just as happy on the couch as they are uh, <laughs> out in the hunting field, I think. Uh, it, really a, a devoted dog and a, and a, and a good companion, um, whether you're at home or out in the field. And people use them for, uh, they're, they're really fashionable in agility right now. Oh, they're okay. using them for fly ball and all kinds of things and, of and because of their quickness and uh, they, they uh, train pretty well. Do they play well with other dogs? Are they good with other dogs? I noticed that. I saw a little bit of a curled lip here for a second, but it yep. lasted about a tenth of a second, and that yep. was it. 
they're pretty close together. So they're pretty good with other dogs. Yes. If I walk into your house, what are they going to do? Bite me? They'll bark at first. Are they going to bite me? <laughs> they're not going to bite you. <laughs> I don't care if they bark. <laughs> yep. So they're pretty good with people. Yes, very good. How are they with kids? For the most part, good. They they need well socialized in the beginning. You know, the the smaller cockers can be overwhelmed by a child mm -hmm. pretty easily. So, uh, you know, you take care to socialize the dog, supervise the child and the dog, and uh, just like you should with any other dog. This dog's <clears throat> crazy about you. Yeah. He, and the one over <laughs> here, if my cameraman can pan over to the left a little bit, this one. What's this one's name again? D. D has been staring at her now oh. for probably. What have we been here? 20 minutes? Yeah. Never, never takes mm -mm. the eyes off you. Unbelievable. Okay, now, so bench means that we're going to show them and they're going to be confirmation and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And these are trained for, for, for the uh, field. For the field. Can someone, can someone learn to do this themselves or do they need to start looking at something and be able to, I don't mind. I'm so used to this, it's unbelievable. <laughs> um, I don't mind. <laughs> That happens all the time. Does it, um, is there special training that, I mean, can someone buy one of these and then get them to do some of the stuff other than be a couch potato? It, it's possible, yes, but it's, but it is very specialized training that, that you go through uh, in order to do this. Like these guys, their primary function is to find birds. So you're going to need a source of birds and things like that to finish the training, but most of the training occurs uh, artificially, where you use uh, uh, retrieving dummies and mm -hmm. things like that, teaching them to swim, teaching them to retrieve, and all their obedience, of course, is quite similar to what you do at home. Now I'm going to turn my attention over here to Becky, because I know this story. Becky, you started, you wanted to do this, then you started to do some of the training yourself. Yeah, a little so bit. Um, I was invited to one of uh, a training clinic that uh, was held in the area. Um, and I went to several of them, and then um, over the years, like I've just I learned a lot, and I had a lab at the time, so mm -hmm. she was kind of my dog that I tried things with on my own, and um, so we would hunt tennis Enough. balls in the yard, and just and she loved it. She loved the training process. It was just good activity for. Her. Um, but then I did get into, um, you know, as I knew the breed more and, and that, and I wanted a little bit smaller dog, like, um, you know, Archie's like 45 pounds right now. So it's just easier if I have to pick him up and do something like mm -hmm. it's just easier. As opposed easier. to the lab before. Exactly. So um, that was it, just a, a nice um, benefit too. But um, <clears throat> so as I lost my lab, I was ready for another dog and I decided to get a Springer and I've had, um, I've done a lot of training on my own, but I've had a lot of help. Um, with with things along the way that I wouldn't be where I am with him and he wouldn't be as well of a trained dog if I didn't have different um, you know friends trainers things like that people that I've worked with to he has a motor together. I think that's in his backside this one's never stopped <laughs> wagging <laughs> neither has that one this one's constant <laughs> oh my lord unbelievable these dogs I mean I, as and people know that have watched these programs they know that my dog of, or my breed of choice is a collie so them this is quite a difference for me to see ones like yep. this yep. do you train Yes. Do I, does everybody here train? You train. Do you train? No. Mm -hmm. You train too? Everybody trains. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I, I decide I want one of these. Okay. Are there people around here that... No, I'm, I'm only kidding. There are people around here. <laughs> okay. I think I'll stick with my calls. Well, no, 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 no. Um, so if I really wanted one of these, what would I look for before I would get one? I mean, I... Uh, are there breeders listed, of course, on AKC websites and yeah, stuff like that? there's some there, too. Uh, you're going to want to do a little bit of homework uh, and, and contact several and pay attention. Like, we select these for their, their natural attributes in the field, so most of the stock that we get comes from trialing and things like that, whether it be in England or whether it be here in this country. So we're following what happens in trials and selecting good breeding stock, both healthy, sound, uh, and good performing. Does the breeding, uh, am I going to get a, trying to look for a dog that has gotten a lot of ribbons and has a lot of um, credit to his, uh, credit for what he can do and stuff like that? Yes. Can you breed something like that, like that into a dog? I think, I think over time, you can take and, and breed uh, the characteristics in that you're looking for and they've been doing it for quite a long time in England and that's where we imported our stock from with these English dogs and uh, they, they've kind of perfected it so uh, 
So they yeah. could go to an AKC site and find them. Yep. You know, most of the most of the advertisements I've found that are on an AKC Where site, going? they're going to be the show dog breeders. Uh, we okay, have right, we have our be. own websites for working spaniels. So that's what they would look for a working spaniel. If that's what to... if that's what they want. I think it goes to what do you want to do with your dog? Right. Do you want to hunt? Yes, you want to look for a working line. If you like the breed, you like the size, you like the personality, you might be more open for either bench or working line and the ribbons aren't going to be as important with those kind of dogs, but Okay, anything else would be I'm forgetting to say just general about these this breed? I th I think if you're if you don't have a lot of experience with working gun dogs, living with them and using them, um, you really ought to get experience because these dogs, like Dave said, they're, they're, they're great family companions, but they're high energy. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and active lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. Active lifestyle. And, and they, yeah. they typically love the training yeah. process, so going mm -hmm. out and being able to do things with them, mm -hmm. whether it's hunting tennis balls in the yard, hunting birds, like being out just it, they're they're great to keep you and your family active but they need that activity to be yeah. a good dog in the house I always make that conversation whenever I'm doing other breeds and I say you've got to without a question go out and find out what this breeds like and do some Absolutely. investigation my ex perfect example is a person who gets a border collie and lives in the third floor of an apartment yeah. in and New York the dog City needs a breed come on what were you thinking when you did that and then those unfortunately are the dogs that soon end up out of that apartment into a shelter or something else goes wrong. And the same thing happens with, with these breeds because they are high energy working dogs and the dog won't be happy and neither will the owners if, if they don't get that opportunity to do what their genetic makeup is telling them to mm -hmm. do. Yeah, um, that's a good point. Boy, I wish if, if I wish I could say that at every program I, I go to, because uh, as I said, we know I've got a collie, and if you don't like to spend time brushing a dog, for God's sake, don't get a collie. That's right. Because that's your lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> you're not, you're not outside throwing a ball, you're inside brushing the dog. So it depends on what you as an individual and as a, a pet owner want to do. And the other thing that you have to consider is the temperament of the dog and your temperament if you're going to be training the dog because um, and by temperament I don't mean are they friendly and they're not going to bite you mm -hmm. their their personality their desire to work with you their desire to accept discipline mm -hmm. if you're if you're um, a strong militaristic heavy-handed person mm -hmm. you don't want a sensitive dog right I okay agree. And and um, and the other way around, if you're, you know, not a bold, aggressive person, mm -hmm. and you get a very strong-willed dog, they'll walk all over you. So the combination's important. Right. So you need to do your research on a lot of aspects of, you know, I mean, people will say, oh, they, they're so pretty, I want one. Now, well, that's not a reason to get one of these dogs because they're pretty. And that's the typical reason for getting many breeds. Oh, I thought that dog was so pretty and really nice. No, that doesn't work. Yeah. Wow, so true. Well, what can we do now? Let's, we've got the land here. We've got uh, four people, one, two, three, uh, certainly don't include me, four <laughs> people that uh, train these and work these dogs. Let's see what we can do and um, okay. try different stuff. All righty. Okay. <laughs> All right, we've had an opportunity now to collect some of the things we need to use in a demonstration to give you an idea of what these dogs do. But I'm going to turn the program very quickly over to Dave. And Dave, tell me some things we may have forgotten and what are we going to do now? So these being working breeds, their specific job is, is to find game, primarily birds, rabbits in England, things like that. Um, the different breeds, the working breeds, um, that we encounter are uh, like Labradors and Pointers and things like that and the Spaniel has a much different job than the Pointer does or the, the Retriever. The Spaniel is built to find game close to you in tight cover and flush it out for you so you can, so you can shoot it and he collects it and brings it home to, to the pot. Well wait a minute, let's have a talk. Will he, bring, will he flush out anything? Well, he'll be primarily what we've trained him to find. So it'd be, you know, pheasants and, and grouse and woodcock and upland birds, primarily. And rabbits. And rabbits. And rabbits. Yep. Do they kill them right away? Do they kill them? No. Mm. No. Oh, they, they're not going to go. You're not. 
Pardon me? That's a big no-no. Yeah. That's a no-no is to kill them. They mm -hmm. spring, basically where the springer gets its name Dude. is, it springs the game. Okay. Okay, the cocker was named after it. It's, it's a cocking dog in England. So in England, they used it in very dense cover to flush woodcock out of the, out of the swamps and the, and the thickets. Mm -hmm. So that's how they get their names, is by the different ways that they, they uh, produce the game and the things that they chase. So have all these been trained to chase what? Pheasants? At pheasants. Mm -hmm. Mostly pheasants. Yep. Pheasants, what? grouse, woodcock. Grouse. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to kill them? Nope. Nope. They just spring them. Bring just, them back. Just get them. Get them. Get them up. Oh, then you're going to have a gun. Yes. Okay. That's what. That, we're not going to show that. No. We decided that wasn't such a good idea. But that's basically how this works. Yep. So you each would have a gun, and the dog gets works. Get, works it, and then the bird takes off, and you attempt to shoot that bird. Yeah. Well put. Attempt. Attempt. I was just going <laughs> to say because. Are you, you <laughs> yes, <laughs> that would be important, wouldn't it? Yeah. And then the, the dog goes and gets it and brings it back to you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you have it for dinner. Yes, you could, couldn't you? Uh, absolutely. Oh. You better. <laughs> well, I have a real problem with that. I even have a problem with that with any type of wildlife. I used to go, to, um, when I was driving school bus, and there was a pile on the side of the road, and I wouldn't even tell you where it was, but it was people that had dumped deer after they had mm. shot them. Yeah. I have a real problem. I don't care if you hunt, just personally. But for God's sakes, let's Usually try and eat what you yeah, Right, it. eat what you shoot. Oh, God, yes. Okay, Dave, what's our first step here? Well, when uh, when you first get your puppy, you know, it's it's important to get a good bond with the dog and, and uh, you know. Okay, okay, we've accomplished that. <laughs> yep. So uh, the next thing that I do is I get it retrieving a little bit, you know, a little bit in the house, and we graduate to going outside and things like that. So. Once they're full grown, they're retrieving well to hand, and that's half their job. You know, they, they go out find the game, but they have to bring it back. Is there a time frame when you need to wait until you actually put them in competition? Do they have to be a certain age? Well, it, with competition, they need to be finished. And finished means that they're steady to wing and shot, and that they can handle all the circumstances that steady go on. Steady to and, wing and shot. Yes. Yeah, so You're steady. these words? I don't have my idea. Wing? And shot. Yeah, so steady to the flush of a bird. Okay. And the shot, meaning the bird being shot. Okay. And the fall of the bird. So he can't go until I command him to go. So after it's flushed out, you shoot the bird. You say, okay, go get it. He, yes. goes, get, he goes and gets yep. it. Yep. So they're watching exactly where it comes down. Right, and that's yeah. how the field trials are judged. So if, you, if your dog didn't stay steady to any of those functions, the finding or the or the shot, then he's out. <laughs> or if he fails on the retrieve. Or he fails the retrieve. Oh, okay. Meaning he can't find it yeah. or can't bring it back. Does or... that happen? No, Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Or they... if he crosses the line into another dog's territory. Oh, okay. Boundaries. See, they forgot to tell me that. Yeah. Do yeah. so you get in trouble if you cross the line? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> we think we've got that now. Yep. <laughs> My so God. we can show you some retrieving well, let's see some stuff. Let's, things let's, like let's that. Let's go back this way. And where do you, can you pick it up from that angle there, from the back end? Okay, let's move back this way. And you can okay. let's see what you want to do. All right. I now turn the show over to you. And oh I will my. just ask my questions that I have no idea sometimes what you're talking about. But I'm so, getting better at this. Which way are we going with it? Out this we're going this way. Okay. Just out this way, maybe out yeah. that way just a little bit. So yeah. we can show single marked retrieves. And okay, what does that mean, single marked retrieve? Single marked retrieve would be a hand-thrown dummy ball item, and the dog marks where it goes, waits to be sent, and then when it's commanded to go, we'll go and get it. One at a time? Yeah. One at a time. What if you threw three dummies out at the same time? Do Don't they well, know which one to bring back? They might not. They, they would probably choose the last one thrown. Okay. I was just curious because sometimes, you know, Yep. Okay. All right, let's try one. Let's see what happens. Okay. Who's going to toss one here? Chris is. Hop. Are these special things that you're tossing? They come in all different sizes and shapes. Oh, OK. Uh, yeah. So they're mm -hmm. often canvas with something inside. Mm -hmm. to Chris, what are, you, what, yeah, what are you telling this one to do now? Get right beside well, you. Well, she wants. Uh, she's supposed to stay while I throw, which is going to be difficult for her to do. Well, she's excited. I know, that's but okay. that's no excuse. D. 
Holy mackerel. <laughs> And sometimes in her excitement, she miss marks. She brings it to your in front of you and then waits for you to take it. Yep. Yeah. And the, the mouth manners of the dog, you know, the dogs need to be tender and gentle with what they're bringing back. Even though you'll see them mouth it a little bit, they're not necessarily hurting anything. And the reason you want them tender mouthed is they're bringing back a very soft fleshed bird. You don't need holes in the bird. You don't need broken bones things like that in the bird. What if they can't find it? What if they can't find it? A lot of times what you can and you do know is, where And you know where it is. If you know roughly where it is, you can go in and help them. Okay. Or some of these dogs are, are advanced enough that you can bring them back out of that cover, stop them, and redirect them back in where they need to go. Okay, so right now it's just a matter of tossing and, and the whole thing. Right. Yeah, in the beginning stages. Now this will develop into, into memory retrieves and that's how we, we kind of start this. So Alfie and I can do, do a little bit of a memory retrieve. Well, wait, so, well, 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 turn around here. What, what, are, what are these, you look like you've got jewelry on. These are, these are whistles, uh, Acme two ten and a half uh, spaniel whistle and what they call a silent whistle, but it's not silent. And when are they used? Um, they're used to communicate with the dog at a distance or when it's out in the field coursing or you want it to stop. You can do that and show us that then? I can do that and show Oh, okay, that's what I want to see. Okay. Okay, what are we gonna, well, what was the thing you said you were just gonna do, you're going to? All right, we'll show you a, uh, a memory retrieve with a mark. Memory so, retrieve, which means what? He'll see where, it, where it's placed. That is a marked retrieve That's if, a he's, mark. if he'd send him now. Right. But you'll see what he's going to do. Alf. How do you know which one to get? It doesn't really make it doesn't that much matter. difference. Good boy. Yeah. Heel. So now we'll line him up. Yield. And you're going to tell me the other, where the other one is? Back. He should remember. Yes, with the memory. He should remember it. Because yes. he saw it and he has to remember it down. where it went down so you, to go back. The thing is, you practice this enough that he become, that you gain the trust of the dog. Okay? So when you say that there is something that he didn't see fall, then he'll trust you and say, okay, we've done this a zillion times and there's always been something at the end of it, so I'm going. So that's what we have to do, just to get him to, to understand in the beginning stages, little memory retrieves, and you can start to lengthen and lengthen that distance, you know, up to 100 yards probably is good with a spaniel. It's, it's probably a really good distance. How far away are you from the, from the bird that you're going to uh, have him get? Uh, be, it could be a lot further than this. Yes, it could be. Yeah. Or, or it might be that length. Yeah. yeah. I mean, sometimes that's, that's you're, pretty typical. You work in like close and dense cover, so those birds are going to be closer that you're going to be shooting. Right. But out in the field, you could have one that you just, you wound, you know, just wing shoot it. And it, and it drifts a good way, so you could have a very distant retrieve, you know, a couple hundred yards even. Or the bird went up behind the dog and he didn't oh. see it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. Yep. What about this whistle? Did you use that now? Just uh, now? No, you didn't yeah. use it now, did you? Yeah, he did. First retrieve. Oh. Yep. On the first retrieve. You can, you can use a recall, so we can leave Alfie sit here. I can go away from Alfie. Does each one of the whistles sound differently than each one of you have on? Are they all the same? Ours, ours are the same pitch. Then I can call Alfie to me with the whistle. Good boy. 
I use a different one. You use a different one? Yeah, it's called a Oh, yeah. Horn. Yeah, not too many people use them. Why did you pick that one? That's just the first one I bought years ago, and I liked it. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we've left, a, we've left a dummy out there for him to remember where it's at. He's sitting right next to it. Gone away. Yep. Good. <laughs> and it wasn't as far as the first one, so he's going <laughs> to overrun it. Attaboy. Oh, my Lord. Attaboy. Come here. Good. Good boy. Show us the dummy. What are these? This is a this is a grouse dummy. It's it's foam, has a tail. It's just so they get used to uh, oh, okay. oh. carrying something that that moves around on them and flops and things like that. There's all kinds of different styles. So we have a canvas. We put some wings on a canvas dummy. Uh, we've got dummies that float real well in the water. Turn over towards him. They're uh, they're uh, hard plastic, soft rubber, and. Uh, the other thing we use a lot of is a tennis ball. Good old tennis ball. <laughs> so. Okay, let's, have, let's see these other dogs do this too. All righty. Right, now, whenever, you, she, whenever she throws it, he's not going to go after it, is he? No. Well, what if he didn't have that on? We well, can try it. This is Chris also, right? Chris, Chrissy, Chrissy, yeah. Chrissy. Okay, Chrissy. Oh. Looks like he's waving like Lassie. Dogs can't see orange, by the way. Yeah, I know. But they can smell. They can smell. And the other thing you'll notice is that Dave and Chrissy and all four of us, the release command that we give for the dogs is their name. Oh, okay, the, I didn't and, notice and, that. I mean, if you're, ever, if you're always going to work by yourself, you can fetch. Right. But if everybody, if you were in a field trial and everybody's dog was released on fetch, you'd have an issue because you're working as a brace, a pair. So dogs are taught to... I'll do a, a different go back. A different, let's slow down, do, different what? When Dave was talking about giving dogs direction, right. just in case they haven't seen, you know, this is what he did before, he did from the side, I'm going to do it from behind the dog. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay, go back. That could be helpful if you're trying to help the dog find the retrieve, if the dog didn't see it go down, that you can give him directions, it's the next step working towards that kind of a, a goal. How long have you how long have you been doing this, Chris? How long have you been doing this? Uh, since nineteen ninety. My lord. It's my first spaniel. And how many spaniels have you had that have done this? I'm on my oh my goodness. Well I have five no. right now. Oh wow. So uh, maybe ten. Very good. Very good. Go what did you say when you blew that whistle? Told him to go over. No, before that. His name? We say, instead of saying sit, we say hop. Hop. Yeah. H-U-P. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Hop. That's a derivative of birds up. Oh, okay. Cool. And not everybody uses it. I mean, you'll see as many Spaniel people saying sit is hop. And, you know, the same with the Labradors. And who is this again? And there wasn't any scent on this either. Yeah. Uh, this is Grifter. Grifter, and how old is he? He he will be two at the end of August. Oh, you're just a baby. <laughs> just a little baby. He was we, hunting this morning. This way he's all muddy. And you, uh, he was flushing out, and and you, did and did you get anything? Mm -hmm. Bird. Yep. Did you? Mm -hmm. Huh. Okay. We'll try. Becky, you want to try one? Let's try you. <laughs> The third type of retrieve 
that Dave alluded to at the end of his explanation. Yeah. You start out with yeah. a marked retrieve, which yeah. means the dog sees it fall. He's got a mark on where it is. Okay. Then there's a memory, you. which he saw the fall. That's it. Something has made him take his mind off of it, whether a second retrieve or, or you intentionally heal him away to develop his memory. You. The third you. type of retrieve is a blind retrieve, where the dog has no idea where it is. Use that. You. But because... You. So this is a memory mark. In a blind retrieve, the dog has no idea, but I he's can't. had enough training that when you tell him, you go straight out there, you're going to find something, they do it. Um, now, do you ever use hand signals out here? Are they ever out there trying to find something? Or yeah. is that a different sport where you would stand here and here. give the hand signals? No, you, you, you would often do that on a blind retrieve if you need to, or, or even on a, a, a memory mark if they get in the wrong area. Um, How many people do this at a time at a trial? One person? Well, no, they, the dogs run in a brace, which is two dogs. With two different... Uh, uh, two different handlers. handlers. Okay, two. Yeah. And two different um, items to throw. Right. Yeah. And the hunt tests, the dogs do not run in braces. They just run one, at, one dog at a time. Because when you bring in another dog doing the same thing over there, it complicates the, the issue. Um, let me see if I can get this little bitch to handle. Sounds like you're swearing at the dog. No, no. That's I'm, the, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding you. <laughs> um, what are we People do sometimes here? use that in anger. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to send her out, and I'm going to stop her part way out, and then I'm going to give her a reason for stopping because I'm going to throw two marked retrieves for her, and then I'm going to decide which one she gets first. And then will she go back and get the second one? Well, yeah, when I send her for her. Okay, I'm, I'm anxious to watch this. Yeah, I am too. <laughs> <laughs> hop, hop. We're, we're going to do this this way. Because I don't know how far back you'll go. Maybe, maybe I will do it this way. Back. Uh. She's obviously disobeying the whistle. Well, that's OK. <laughs> that's what dogs do. Uh. Hop. Hop. Now I have her attention. Leave that. Dave, how often do you people train? Get out. Really? Daily. <laughs> Daily. I have a trainer that says, someone says, are you done training? She says, no, you're never done. As never long as the dog is living, you're training. You. OK, now what about that other one that's over there? You. Up. Me. Good girl. What else can we see? Well, I can show you a little bit of, of a different way to do kind of the same thing. We can heal Alfie out. We can we can place a dummy with him. I can walk away from him. I'll put two more out. You did pretty good. And we can call Alfie into us to a point, stop him, send him over for one of those. <clears throat> maybe send him straight back out for the other one, or maybe stop him and send good him girl. for the left. And. We can do three retrieves. Do you ever forget where they are? Sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Just you got to pay attention. <laughs> Just checking. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the whistle commands, a single blow on the whistle is stop. When they're quartering, oh, no, which we haven't done yet, when they're hunting, if you, they're over here and you want them to turn and come across and turn, you go pip, pip, two pips on the whistle is the turn whistle. And then multiple pips is your recall. So there's really only three basic whistle commands. Come around. Oh, she says he's going to do something, and I'm not out there. 
This one wants to go. Do they ever fight over a... You don't allow it. No, I was going to say I wouldn't think. So that dog's going to get all three of them. Not in one shot, though. No, that's okay. <laughs> I figured that'd be kind of hard. Yep. So what you have to be aware of, he's going to be coming at me, so I've got to actually blow that whistle a little ahead of where I want him to stop so he ends up where he needs to be. And uh, this could be useful. He's out and retrieved something, and you've shot something else, and he didn't get to see that. So he can bring that back. You can line him to something. Maybe you've got two or three marks for him to retrieve it at, at a time. You're out dove shooting and things like that. Gone away. Generally give a pause, let the dog collect itself. Over. Yeah. You. This dog is a field trial champion, by yeah. the way. <laughs> <laughs> Awfully good. Back. How old is that one? Now, see, he was going to divert and get that one, so we're going to send him out and get the other one. Back. Back. No. Get out. I know it's here somewhere. How do you reprimand them when they screw up? Well, various ways. You can show them where that retrieve is, is out there and make them successful, and that's probably the best way to do things is with a spaniel. If, if you're hard with a spaniel, you can squash them, yep. and they don't want to work for you anymore. you got to make buddies with them again, that kind of stuff. With... with uh, if you show them what you want, they'll give it to you readily, you know? Get out! Everybody could learn that, not to be so rough on them. Back! I know, isn't that the deal nope. truth? Yeah. He ain't gonna do it. <laughs> He's forgotten that. Yep. Come on. Is he? Mm -hmm. You know, I got confused. Mm -hmm. I actually talked about punishment. He forgot. The worst thing you can do to a springer is just deny him the retreat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's the, the reprimand, basically. They live for it. Yeah. So it's important now that we go through getting there's There's, this, there's one over here, too. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. That's the one he wanted to get initially. Right. But we wanted the one back there. Try the GI crawl, maybe that'll work. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not talking to you. hanging out, better. social hour. I know, be I know better than to talk to you. My hands are <laughs> in my pockets. He's got a bromance going here with mine. Good. Ready? Ready? Look at that tail. Get him. Get him. I know. He's got two more to get. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. No. Get out. There he goes. Good boy. Ah! <laughs> Look at it. I found it. <laughs> now look how excited I am. Good. You ready to get the other one? You can just get it. Get out. Means you know where it is. You're kidding me. And that one's orange, so you didn't quite see it. But he never forgot that one. And he's a, and the he, reason why he never forgot it is because it was the last one thrown. Mm -hmm. Huh. 
Oh, unbelievable. What else do we, is there anything else I need to know about all this? Is there anything else you think we should show? Well, I think the big part of their, of their, uh, let me get over this way. Job Hold is to, to quarter and find game, so they're using scent and they're, they're hunting. And once they make that scent, then they're driving in and pushing the game out. So we, in the beginning stages, have to show them how to stay with us because if they're way over, you know, 30 yards from us, then by the time the bird gets out of the cover and we get our gun up and the whole deal, the bird would be out of range. So he needs to be within range. And how old is this one? He's seven. And he is, he has titles for doing this? Yes. What did you say he is? Field trial champion. Oh, field trial champion. Yep. And how many of these have you had? Um, this is my, this is my second Cocker Spaniel. I've had, uh, I've had Springer Spaniels for about 25 years. What will um, you go back to? Or will you stay with this or will you go to the other one? I'm pretty, pretty, uh, sold on Cocker Spaniels. Oh, they're, they're, uh, okay. They're kind of endearing and, and busy and I like to be busy. <laughs> huh. And how many of you had, uh, what, what's this one's name again? D. D. I should remember that one. That one's easy. Uh, and how many of these have you had? Oh, here. 12 or 15. And you have some that are uh, in the kennel back here, too. Mm-hmm. And do you also work them all the time? Yeah, yeah. You work this one today? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm, I'm, I had my youngster out early this morning with, with Chrissy and Grifter. Um, and she was feeling neglected, so I brought her out to play. And you can use all these different areas. Oh, and, yeah. Okay. And the woods. And Becky? I know we had the black lab. This mm -hmm. is the first one, right? This is my first Springer, my first trained hunting dog. So he's... Dave, what type of training to... I mean, you guys have shown me just about everything. Is there anything else we've forget? We forgotten here? Well, we can show you, we can show you groundwork and how we stop them and how we turn them. They're always they're very good in the water, too. Yeah. Oh, are they good in the water? They're mm -hmm. wonderful in the water. Yeah. Yeah. Show me one of those, the groundwork thing. Is that okay? And so you, you've heard us talk about quartering and using that term, and that, yes. that refers to the pattern that we want the dog Good. to run in, yeah. you know, in front of us. It's it's kind of Good. almost like a, a series of figure eights. Oh, okay, is, is gotcha. the ideal. Um, but and it's a good pattern to cover so that they it works well in all wind conditions because the dogs are going to pick up scent and it's going to be different based on the direction of the wind. Um, but they will be successful if they if we can use that to find the game and, and run in that pattern then they'll pick up the scent in all those winding conditions. Well let's see that once. Well so with I want to see how much more time I have with my cameraman here. He's still working the camera so that's good. Alright. When he starts to scream and yell that means I'm I'm over time. And the other thing while you're quartering is is that he can simulate what we call steady to flush, which means when the dog finds game and puts it up in the air, they stop so that it's safe for you to take a shot. So he can simulate this with a thrown dummy when the dog's quartering. So there's various things that should tell the dog to sit down once he's been steadied. So the whistle, of course, one whistle blast means to sit down and uh, the bird flushed into the air is another thing telling him to sit down. And then the gunfire, which I'll simulate with a hand clap, is another thing for him to sit down. So all these messages are reinforced through training and time to teach him to be steady. Because his natural inclination is to chase and catch and return. And we don't let him do that because it's our sport, our game. And uh, he's just our an companion. Accessory and your helper. Yep. All right. So you'll see me make two, two toots on the whistle for his turn. You want the dog to be covering an area of ground to both sides and slightly in front of the handler, who is theoretically the gun mm -hmm. in a hunting situation. Okay, now he tossed that. That's the steadiness. And that's tossed the steadiness. That and the dog sit that. down. Mm -hmm. And she, she saw it go up in the air, and she did the same thing. Um, so the quartering is the best method for the dog to search the potential game holding ground in, in relationship to the handler. 
That you don't have to teach to pointing dogs because pointing dogs find game and they stop. And you can be oh, 100 boy. yards away mm -hmm. and a good oh, pointing boy. dog will hold it till you walk up. But flushing dogs, which spaniels are, their job is put it up in the air. So you have to keep them within range, which is probably the most difficult. Run away. Um, thing, what we call ground treatment. You're constantly working on ground treatment because a flushing dog is no good to you if they're 40, 50, 60 yards away putting up game. And so that's a demonstration of steadiness. The cameraman checked all these shot. dogs sitting here because they all stopped as soon as he clapped his hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, so the ultimate degree of steadiness is, of course, when that dog smells yeah. something, goes in and flushes a bird right under his nose, and he's going full tilt. The bird goes up in the air, and he's supposed to sit down. You know, that's a, a lot to ask yep. of an animal that's a predator Strange. and trying to catch his dinner. Pointing dogs, the way they work, they come in and they lock up on point. Now, they also should be steadied wing and shot for their safety's sake so they don't get shot mm -hmm. chasing the bird. But it's a lot easier. You're, you're not asking the pointing dog to, to go against their natural instincts to chase, you know, to go in full tilt, put a bird up, and then all, and sit down just as fast. Mm -hmm. um, so we ask a lot of these flushing dogs. Um, like I say, a good pointing dog his instincts are telling him, I'm going to stop. And then, and then the handler goes in and puts and the And I think so, something we haven't mentioned, like we talked about steadiness and what it is, but to me, like the purpose behind steadiness is for safety. Yeah. You know, that dog, it stops and it sits, so it's there and that bird is up and flying, now somewhere away from your dog that you have a safe shot. Like otherwise, either you don't shoot some birds because your dog is too close, um, or worst case scenario, we injure a dog and that's what we don't want to do. Well, that would be the worst. But there's yeah. a lot of people that hunt without steady dogs. Well, that's not very smart. Well, they think it is. <laughs> well, a lot of people do a lot of things we don't agree with, yeah. probably. There's, there's arguments back and forth, yeah, you know. Are. Most Probably. of it's retrieving based, you know. If the dog's not steady, he's closer to the bird when it comes down. Mm -hmm. So there's less chance of losing a crippled bird or anything like that. But, you know, our argument is always, well, they should mark better if they're sitting down and watching the bird fly away. Yeah and get shot. Yeah, because dogs that are chasing a bird that's flying away, their head's up in the air, they're looking at that bird, and they run into all kinds of obstacles oh, I'm and sure. hurt themselves. So, you know, a steady dog is a dog that's under control, and a dog under control is a safe dog. Right. Okay, well, Dave, I think uh, I'm looking at my cameraman. Are we getting close? Yes, he's shaking his head. So, I, I thank you. This has been unbelievable. I've <laughs> I love watching them and I, them going back and forth. I've never seen that. Yep. Huh. Again, thanks, and, and I hope everybody that watched this not only learned something, I hope that you able were entertained by them. I'm certainly entertained by them. And I, of course, get to be close to them, which is better yet. <laughs> so thanks very much. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank, you. You. thank, thank you. you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.